Hello and welcome back to my philosophical and musical channel. So, I would like to talk today about one book, which is named uh, The Logic of Sense of Gilles Deleuze, very briefly in practical and theoretical sense. Uh, so, both these meanings are important for us and for musicians and for artists and for some people who wants to know something new. Okay, Gilles Deleuze examines in the work The Logics of Sense several aspects or rather concepts of philosophical discourse. Um, through the prism of Lewis Carroll's uh, Alice in Wonderland, you know, it's children's books, uh, very funny and um, very tough, to tell the truth. It's uh, rich with a lot of sense. And Deleuze criticizes Platonism, talks about the paradoxes of the Stoics, for example, and about the loss of the meaning and uh, loss of the sense, uh, so meaning-forming principle in the modern world. We have a lot of contradictions, a lot of messy statements, a lot of um, and, uh, useless um, information, uh, thanks to social media, thanks to a lot of other medias. So, Deleuze criticized Platonism and he says that the power of simulacrum determines modernity. What does it mean, simulacrum? You know, but we are theory of simulacrums. It's something false and something illusory. And, um, however, they turn to philosophy in order to find some benefit for the coming times. Coming times and the problem of Platonism lies in its bifurcation. So, we have the idea Eidos, so-called Eidos, and we have this world, and this is some kind of illusory world, as you know, and the absence of a certain center, so certain um, sense center, if I could say like this. And for Deleuze, as far as I can understand, this is a provoking moment. Mm, provoking moment in the blurring of meaning and blurring of this sense and mm, our destruction. So, it's impossible to perceive the idea directly and is the crucial thing for Platonic ideas. You know, they are absolutely uh, separate and something independent, independently existing. And um, then a certain gap, certain gap is formed that is incompatible with the real world, with our reality. And the inability to communicate meaning to being is, com is something that can be overcome by philosophy and modern philosophy, of course, uh, and this philosophy is something like medicine, is something like healing, something like healing for us. Our nonsense in art, absurd, um, do you like absurd? Uh, I, I think about waiting for Godot, for example, or mm, in Russian literature we have a lot of uh, absurd poets like Harms, for example. And so, nonsense in art, in literature, he analyzes a voice being defined. But as Delos says, that which has no sense, this absurd has no sense, but it's opposed to the absence of sense. And Delos denotes the types of relations within propositions. Uh, denotation, that's uh, the relationship between what has been said and the state of the things. Manifestation, manifestation expresses the speakers, presents values, positions, so your own, your own position, your own thoughts and meanings. And signification, signification is attitude 
to universal truths and universal statements like arithmetic, geometry and universal, universal scientific laws, for example. And there are 34 series of paradoxes in the book Logic of Sense. And it turns out that the utterance of unthinkable outside of the subject. A manifestation precedes the formation of meanings, you know. And here we can recall Descartes, of course, Descartes and his extended thing. Uh, and the thinking thing as opposite to the extended thing. Um, they are absolutely different for Descartes, and here we can remember this dualistic position of this world, and that's uh, outside of person, no meanings are formed, no, absolutely no meanings and no sense. And it also calls into question the absoluteness of platonic ideas, if they are absolutely separate existing. And um, at the same time we fall into the circle of self-determination within these three types of relations. This wandering in a circle also provokes the search for an elusive meaning. Elusive meaning uh, when I say Alice is getting bigger, um, Delos says, um, I believe she is getting bi bigger than she was in previous time. Yeah? But it's also true that it's getting smaller than it is now if she continues to grow up. Yeah? Um, of course, it can be bigger and smaller at the same time. Now it's bigger before it was smaller, but it becomes more than it was. And less than it is, it has become, it has become at the same moment. This is the essence of the simultane simultaneity of becoming. So this um, simultaneous theater, you know, according to, for example, Bernd Alais Zimmermann and his opera uh, Soldiers, um, we have a lot of events uh, at once. And um, the main feature of this simultaneity is to escape from the present. It's precisely because of this eluding of the present uh, that becoming doesn't tolerate any division or distinction, any division or distinction into before and after, past and future. So, the simulacrum is characterized by endless becoming and constant sleeping away. But according to Deleuze, meaning must still exist somewhere and it's possible or is it possible? Is it possible for some fourth relation where meaning will be freed from infinite representation in language? Mm. So, we have a scalpel, for example, and scalpel cuts through flesh. One body communicates to another, not a new property, but a new attribute to the cut. And our body is to be cutting. And this attribute doesn't mean any real quality. On the contrary, it's always expressed by a verb implying not being, but a way of being. It's just a process. On the contrary, it's always expressed by a verb implying not being. But a way of being, yes, such a way of being is somewhere on the edge, on the surface of that being whose nature is not capable of change. So, Stoics also um, divide the world into bodies and ethics or interactions. So, it's just a rel relationships between bodies and ethics. And um, the truth of Sense for Deleuze is precisely in the event. And this event is a crucial point for 20th century, for many, many thinkers. Uh, nonsense and meaning cannot contradict each other in this way. And uh, it's in the absurd that one can see the origin of meaning. 
uh, since it's free from infinite refer reference. Therefore, Deleuze turns to Carol for examples. Uh, for example, uh, sliding like this, we move to the other side because the other side is nothing but the opposite sense direction. This opposite sense direction is also very significant and important for us. So, for Deleuze, um, the transition from causes to quasi-causes is a solution to the problem of meaning formation and sense formation. In particular, it can be applied in pedagogy, for example, if you want to learn something new as a system forming method in order to master the principle of being in the world as mm, communication, as a relationship and even by contradiction of absurdity it can be useful. useful. So, in a practical sense, yeah? Um, in a practical sense, if you want to learn something, to learn something new, then you must link the new with the existing one, existing in your background, yeah? And it's always worth to use all kind of contradictions and often they work no worse and even better, even better than logical conclusions and it's always worth considering your experience, but at the same time try to rise, try to rise uh, through the familiar to the less well-known. And I think it's a good way to use nonsense, nonsense and absurd. It can be really useful. So, thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. All good to you and bye.